we're going to be looking at the alkene family. You will have studied the alkenes previously in National 5 Chemistry, where you would have looked at the carbon to carbon double bond and the addition reactions that it can undergo. You would also know that the test for an alkene is that it will yeah, decolorise bromine water quickly. Today we're going to look at the alkenes in more detail. First of all, we're going to look at the preparation of alkenes. Previously in possibly S3 or National 4 Chemistry, you would have looked at the preparation of alkenes as being cracking of long chain hydrocarbon molecules. This method of preparation of alkenes, although successful, doesn't always allow you to choose what alkene you want to prepare. If you're using an alkene for a synthesis, you want to know which alkene you're using. So today we're going to have a look at preparation methods that allow you to do that. The first method that we're going to look at is the dehydration of alcohols. Dehydration of alcohols can take place in two ways. You can either heat up your alcohol until it's a vapour and pass it over hot aluminium oxide. This is um, similar to cracking. Or you can use concentrated sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid. Concentrated phosphoric acid is preferred as there's less charring of your reactants and less side products produced. Another way that you can produce an alkene is through the base induced elimination from a haloalkane, which we looked at in previous videos. Now we're going to have a look at the reactions of alkenes. The main reaction of an alkene is the addition of an alkene. It's an electrophilic addition because the alkenes have a carbon to carbon double bond which contains a lot of electron density so it means that electrophiles will be attracted towards that. We have four reactions that we can carry out for the alkenes. Firstly we could add hydrogen so this would be hydrogenation, and this will lead you to an alkane. The next reaction we could do is to add a halogen, so X2, and this will lead you to a dihaloalkane. You could add a hydrogen halide, HX, to get a monohaloalkane. And then finally, we could add H2O to give you an alcohol. All of these reactions involve saturating the double bond that is found within an alkene. We're going to start by looking at this reaction here, where we add a halogen to give us a dihaloalkane. So if we start with ethene, and we're going to add on bromine. <coughs> I'm going to draw it like this, as this is how the bromine would approach the double bond. So the bromine comes in perpendicular to the double bond, and there's lots of electrons in this area. So whilst the bromine-bromine bond is usually a pure covalent bond, when it approaches the carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond, it pushes the electrons within the bromine-bromine bond further up as it repels. So we end up having a slightly negative bromine here and a slightly positive bromine here. The electrons from the double bond can then be shown as a double-headed curly arrow coming out to attack this bromine here. And then the bromine-bromine bond, which is now slightly polarised, can break. This leads to an interesting situation where we have this cyclic intermediate that forms. The bromide ion that was lost previously can now come and attack the cyclic intermediate. Now it's quite bulky on this side so it attacks from the other side 
and because of the way that it attacks we always end up with a bromine on each of the carbon atoms that had the double bond between them. So the electrons will attack this carbon here, this bond will break, putting the electrons back here to the bromine and this will form our dihaloalkane. So the most important thing to remember for this reaction is that when you're making a dihaloalkane that you always get a cyclic ion intermediate. The next reaction that we're going to look at is the production of a monohaloalkane. In this reaction we're going to be adding on HX where X is a halogen. Here we're going to start with propene. We're then going to have our HX molecule approach in a similar way to the bromine did in the last reaction. So here you already have a polar bond where the X will be slightly negative and the H will be slightly positive. So this will be attracted to the electrons in the double bond. These electrons can then come out and can attack the hydrogen and then the halide ion is produced. Now I've drawn this in a very specific way. You'll notice that the H has joined onto the carbon which already had the most H's attached. This is because the carbocation intermediate that is produced is then more stable. This carbocation intermediate with the positive charge on this carbon has these two methyl groups on either side which can inductively donate a little bit of electron density to try and stabilise it. Had we added the H onto this middle carbon and had the positive charge here on the end, this carbon is more exposed, we've got these two hydrogen atoms and then the ethyl chain and this, is, this wouldn't be as stable a carbocation. This is what we call Markovnikov's rule. So the major product of any addition of HX is always where the H atom joins onto the carbon with the most H's attached already. So now we can bring back in our X minus. Our X minus is going to attack this carbocation here. And this means that we're going to form the two substituted haloalkane. This is our major product. The minor product that we make is the one with the X on the end carbon. So the one substituted. So this would also form, but there would be much less of it. The last reaction we're going to look at is the production of alcohols, and this also follows the Markovnikov rule. We're going to look at the acid catalyzed production of propane. We're going to look at the acid catalyzed production of propanol. So we're going to have our acid come and attack first. So this is from the catalyst. And this H will add on to the C which already has the most H's attached. leaving behind our carbocation intermediate. So this one here with it having the two methyls on either side is more stable than the carbocation being centered on the end carbon. We're now going to bring in water for the hydration part of the reaction. 
The lone pair from the water will attack the carbocation. And that will leave the oxygen as positive with the three bonds there and then we need to regenerate the catalyst so one of these bonds will break regenerating our H plus catalyst and producing our alcohol in the process For each of these addition reactions, draw the major product. Pause the video now and try these examples. First of all, I'm going to draw out the full structural formula for each of the alkanes that we have. So we have a CH3, a C, CH3, then a double bond, and then a C with two H's. So this is the carbon with the most hydrogens attached, and that is where the H will join onto. So that means that our major product will be 2-methylpropane. So that means that our major product will have this structure. And will be 2-chloro, two 2-methylpropane. Two For this next reaction, the alkene that we are starting with has this structure. This is the carbon with the most H is attached, that is where the H from the HBr will join on. So that means that our final structure will look like this. So this is 2-bromo, two 2-methylbutane. Two Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe or follow me on Twitter for regular updates on new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.